So welcome at Mishak Sonatana number two. So in my eyes, I'm very happy that we have the Mishak Sonatas. There are three of it. And my favorite is the second. So Mishak was part of the Czech double bass society, the, the Czech kind of playing the bass. And uh, everyone, everybody of us know the Czech kind of playing, this very sonore, dark, strong playing. And you find all of this perfect composed in uh, Mishek's sonatas. So it's, for me it's also one of the honest, really um, good written sonata, because uh, the piano part is wonderful. And there are a lot of also um, chamber music parts where the bass plays uh, low notes. Like if you play the, the, the Brahms sonata for, for cello, some, sometimes the, the cello is accompanying. That's exactly this part which look funny with the double bass, by the way, because it's written for the cello. But here it's written for the bass. And uh, these chamber music ideas are very clear and very sonore. So this makes me really happy to have uh, this piece. Um, if you look in the score, everything is written extremely clear. So there are some composers which really, which, uh, really write very clear. They compose a piece and then go next time through and uh, really write what they want. If you look uh, at the first movement, you read Confo or Go, then you have the first idea which kind of spirit this can have. Then you see the first note with the forte, but with the decrescendo. And already in the second bar, you have meno forte. So if you ignore this, you might do the first fold. Yeah? The, because we see it's con foco, it's forte, but with the decrescendo. It's to start with a kind of out breathing and not with a ah, like this. So if I have this. Yeah? So I don't do. Makes me crazy, makes the public crazy. That's a very important thing to start um, this sonata. It's always possible to kill it in the first bar. <laughs> so. Maybe you see that I reach more and more the frog. When I start, I relax. I start here with less bow. I'm, I'm like the risky plane. When I read Confoco, it's riskful plane. It's for me clear. But riskful does not just mean that I'm on the frog, on the frog, and I'm loud and louder and louder and more loud again, killing again the public. It just means it's also riskful plane here. Yeah, because here I need a really good contact point in the second bar. <laughs> I have a wide range just in the first bars. Makes it really clear. And then you continue making music. Very clear, written, the crescendi. Yeah? Uh, for example, if you... Uh, that's the first note written in fortissimo. Yeah? And then... Then it continues fortissimo, a few bars. Yeah? Um, then you have, yeah, then you have the, the accents, which doesn't mean for me, remember the, 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 the Czech kind of playing, it's not just, not just pressing, so it's like going like this in the string, not like this, yeah, so. Again, see you again. It's again forte with the decrescendo, yeah. and theme continues, and then you arrive. Then you arrive again on, on the fortissimo, but one note higher. It's a kind of uh, dramatic theme, I think. So very cantable, uh, lots of shifts, also for for practicing a fantastic piece. And uh, you can <clears throat> you can see this sonata like a practicing sonata doing a lot of technical things. 
There's nearly everything is in there. Every kind of bowing, yeah, in a very different tempi. And you can see it as a really, as a real treasure of, of ideas and differences. Um, you know, take care if you do. I just follow again the composer, he writes uh, and mezzo forte now and then. Classical style, I jump a bit more and I'm a bit flexible with it. I don't do jumping switch on or off. Yeah? So if I play lower, I jump a bit more. If I'm in a higher position, it sounds ugly if I jump too much. Yeah? So then, then I can do also uh, with this articulation a flow, a line, and not just noise. And then we have the, the first... Uh... Somehow I love the, the, the sonata because of these bars. You really have the... Like really bass parts. Hmm?